Hi, and welcome to FreshMind.com. My name is Eric, and this is our last and final part of our tire track animation. The only thing we have left is to create the deformation in our mesh. I'm going to start off by just saving this as tire tracks underscore four. This is really easy to do. Just select the ground mesh, go up to soft body, make sure you're in your dynamics menu set. Go to soft rigid bodies, go down to create soft body options box, edit resets. Whoops. Edit reset settings. I'm just going to make sure it's on make soft and then just click create. That's all there is to it. What Maya just did was created a bunch of particles on our mesh and each particle is on top of a vertex. So as the particles move, so do the vertices on our mesh and that's how it's going to deform. If we do an animation right now, nothing's going to happen. We need to tell Maya to allow this tire to collide with these particles so that the particles will move when this tire hits them. So over in the outliner, where the ground is, you'll see a plus to the far left. Just click it to expand it, and now you'll see the particles. I'm going to click the particles, press and hold down the control button, and then click on tire. Go up to your particles menu, go down to make collide. Everything is default settings. So now if we play our animation, now it's causing the particles to go away from our tire. Alright, so we want this to kind of hold together a little better. There's two things that we're going to do. One is going to go to our ground particles. Over here in the channel box, you'll see conserve. Right now it's value of 1. I'm going to change it to 0. Now typically that's pretty much all we need to do because if we hit play, you can see we've got pretty much exactly what we want. It's living in indention. But if you want a little bit, a little, a little bit more control, not a lot, but depending on the animation you want, you can control what that looks like by adding some springs to kind of hold all this together a little better. So let's select our, our ground mesh over here in the outliner, select the ground, go to soft rigid bodies, and we're going to do create springs, options box, edit, reset settings. I'm going to change the creation method to wireframe. Wire walk length, right now if we create, it's going to create a spring between all these uh, points but it's going to follow the mesh, so it's going to look like a bunch of squares, just like our mesh does. If I change this wire walk length to 2, then it's also going to connect these points diagonally, not just horizontally and vertically. It's going to do it diagonally as well. So 2, create. It, depending on the how dense your mesh is, it will determine how long this process takes. All right, there it is mine, and you can see, if we scroll in here, you can see some dotted lines going horizontally, vertically and diagonally. So that's why I did a value of 2. Okay, over here in the outliner you'll see the spring, so if we click on that, if you look over here in the channel box, you'll see a stiffness. So you can adjust this stiffness value right here to get different results uh, depending on your animation. So I'm just in a habit now of when I use soft bodies, uh, depending on what I'm doing, usually I'll create springs, just gives me a little bit more control. Alright, for this one is going to be fine. So let's go ahead and go about halfway and let's just go ahead and do a render and see what this looks like. Alright, it's looking pretty good. Let's go a little further and do another render. Alright, I'm liking it except I'm not really liking the bump value on my tire treads. So let me, and all this, these, uh, this grid stuff all over the ground mesh, if you don't want to see that, just go up to your show menu and just turn dynamics off. And it gets rid of all that. Alright, um, my bump value. Let me open up my hypershade. There's my ground shader. Click the inputs. There's my bump node. Double click it, open up the attributes. And this value, I'm going to knock it down some more. Let's try 0.01. Just cut it in half again. Alright, that's better. x is probably pretty good right there. Let me knock it down some more and see what it looks like. Let's try 0.07. All right, not bad. So depending on the, the look, how deep you want your treads, something like that's looking pretty good for me. 
So I might let's try 0 0.08. I think I'll just go with 0 0.08, 0 0.008 rather, and it's a negative value on mine. All right, so I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the depth that the tire is going into the ground. Just some trial and error here. All right, looks pretty good. Next thing you need to do is let's figure out kind of a, uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and make our tire where it, it rotates, it spins, as it goes across, but we want it to be perfect. So if we actually had modeled a tire with some treads, you know, we don't want our tire spinning faster than it's moving. So how do we do that? It's actually not too bad. Here's our ground plane. Now I'm not the best mathematician, actually I'm not very good at all, but let's see if we can do this. Our ground plane, when we created it, is a hundred units wide by a hundred units, uh, well, length and width are a hundred. So we know that this ground plane is a hundred units across. If you don't know what yours is, and you've already deleted your history and stuff, so you can't see it, there is a, if we go to modify, or actually create menu, there is a measuring tool. You go over to distance tool, you click that, you can click on a point, and then you can click on the other side, and then you can see it gives us a distance right there. So it's 100 across. All right, I'm control Z to undo that. So we know this is 100 across. Now we need to figure out what's the distance all the way around our tire, the circumference. The circumference is going to be pi, which is 3.14, times the diameter, or the height of this uh, tire. Um, or we just do twice the radius. When we created this, I created it with the default value, so it's the radius was a value of 1. And all we did was scaled it up. So whatever we scaled it up, we multiplied that by 1. Since uh, Let's just double check. Let's go to our Create menu, Polygon Primitives, Pipe, Options Box. Alright, so the radius was 1. So when we scaled it up, all we got to do is multiply the original radius times what we scaled it. So 1 times 3.885 for mine. So 3.885 is a radius, which means the diameter is just twice that. So 2 times 3.885, I've got a calculator here, equals 777. All right, so the diameter of this tire is 777, or actually 7.77. So the circumference is going to be 7.77 times pi, which is 3.14, equals 24.3978. So let me write that down on my paper here. 24.3978. All right. So we know that our ground plane is 100 units across. So how many of these tire circumferences can fit across there. So let's just do 100 divided by 24.3978 equals 4.098. So 4.0987. Okay, so this tire needs to rotate 4.0987 times to get from the beginning of the ground to the end of the ground. And each rotation, as far as the tire, rotates 360 degrees. So I'm going to multiply. I hope this is not getting too confusing for you. Uh, if it's got to rotate four times all the way around, four times 360 degrees, and basically that's what we're doing here. So 4.0987 times 360 degrees equals 1,475.54 yada yada yada. So here's what we're going to do. Now that I got that value and probably confused everybody that's watching this, I'm going to select the tire and over here in the channel box you'll see under the input nodes motion path 1. We want to find out which one of these values rotates our tire. Okay, This front twist does not do it. Up twist does not do it. All right, side twist. So it looks like a negative value. We want this to go negative, rotate the negative value. 
So let's scrub forward our timeline. So our tire is right there at the beginning of our ground. So right there. The side twist, we want to stay zero. I'm going to right click on the words and choose key selected. I'm going to play this animation, go all the way to the end. Or I can just scrub forward if it's not going to mess the ground plane up too bad. There we go. Now I don't care what shape of the ground plane is, I just want to get my the tire all the way to the end right there. So that's probably pretty good. All right, that value that I determined was 1,475.5428. So if our tire rotates four times, 4.09 such and such times around, it's going to rotate a total of 1,475 degrees. I'm going to key that, so right click, key selected. Uh, we can't really see our tire turn because it's all one color, so let's add a, assign a new color to this. Uh, let's just do it this way. I'm just going to right click on it, assign new material, Lambert, over the channel of the attribute editor over here, where the color is, far right. I'm going to click on the checkerboard box. Let's click on, well, we can do whatever we want to. Let's do ramp. Let's make two colors. Let's change it to no interpolation, so it's just straight. All right, I'm going to make sure I move in my view panel. Press number six just so I can see the textures. All right, let's make this to where, let's go and make one of these black, maybe a dark gray. And the other one, let's make white. Except. All right. Um, let's change the direction of this. So up here to type, V ramp, change to U ramp. And I'm just going to lower this down to just where it's just halfway. It doesn't really matter what we do. We could even make it a small thing like that. All right, so now we've got something on our tires so we can actually tell if it's rotating. Let's go ahead and play our animation. Let's see what we get. Up, oh, going the wrong way. I didn't make a negative value, so let's go back to our tire, channel box, motion path. Here's our side twist. Well, let's go, looks like we keyframed up here at 137, so let's go to frame 137. And let's change this value to a negative and rekey it, key select it. So now it's rotating the other direction. So if we hit play, you can see our tires rotating exactly the way it needs to now. All right, just in case that was confusing to you, our ground plane was 100 units across, we needed to figure out the distance around our tire, so we just figured out the circumference. And then we took that distance and divided it into our the distance of our ground plane. And we've determined that our tire needs to turn a little over four times, or about four times, completely around to get all the way across. And each rotation of the tire is 360 degrees, so we just multiplied four by 360. And we took that value and plugged it into that when we select our tire, we plug that value into the side twist. So at the very beginning of our plane, we made it zero. The end of our plane, we made it to that value that we figured out. So once you understand it, it's pretty easy. All right, so now we need to figure out a angle that we want for our render. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let this play all the way out. And I'm going to find a rendering angle that I want to render this out as. So maybe something like this. Let me bring my resolution gate, see what my render settings are. I'll do a 1K render. There we go. It's going to take a while to render it out, but I can just pause this. Let's see what this looks like here. All right, so there's our I think that looks okay like that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So bookmarks, so view, bookmarks, edit bookmarks. I'm going to call this render angle one. Hit enter and then close. 
That's only just so that if I move around, I can go back up to view, bookmarks, there's our render angle one. I can click on it, it takes me right back to the way I was. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do a save. Let's set up our rendering. So let's open up our render settings. I'm just gonna use the Maya software. And let's just see the difference between high quality. It might speed up the render a little bit. So it looks like high quality is pretty much about the same as the highest quality. It's really not a whole lot of difference. So I think that's going to be fine for me. Let's open the render settings back up. Common tab. This is going to put, it's going to save all these renderings in our images subfolder. So if you look right there, it's going to go into our images subfolder. I'm going to give everything a name. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm going to call this um, tire animation. Image format, I'm going to use Targa. I like Targa. It works well with Autodesk Combustion. Um, Autodesk Combustion is the software that I'm going to be using to create the, to put all the renderings together into a movie. So Targa works good with it. Down here, frame animation. I'm going to change this to name.pound.ext. What that does is, if you look up here, you'll see a file name. It's going to name all of our renderings. Tire animation is going to give it a number and it's going to give it the uh, Targa extension, TGA. All right, let me do this. I'm going to change the start frame down here to 9 and the end frame to 150. Just so I can show you what this is going to do, what this frame padding is, for those that don't know what it is. All right, it's going to name from render out frame 9 to frame 150. Frame 9 is going to be labeled tire animation.9. Frame 150 is going to be labeled tire animation.150. The problem with that is some software packages will look at this 9 and this 150 and say, okay, well, 1 comes before 9. So it's going to put frame 150 before frame 9. And you're going to get a really bad movie. It's not going to be what you expected. Your tire is going to be jumping all over the place. So to make no mistake about the order of our renderings, we've got this frame padding. If I change it to 2, now you can see it's going to name it 09 to 150. All right, but since we're going all the way to 150, three digits, I'm going to change this frame padding to 3. So 009 all the way to 150. So now there's no mistake. 0 comes before 1. So that's just going to help us to make sure that our rendering stay in the right sequential order. Now I'm going to change our start frame to 1, and we're going to render out our animation which is frame 1 to frame 150. We're going to render out every frame so if we wanted to render out every other frame we could change this this by frame we could change it to 2. Um, what's that good for? If you were going to do like a time lapse of, of something, maybe a plant growing, well you could render out the plant gr growing, uh, you could like render out or you do an animation of a plant growing and then you could render out like every 10 frames or every 5 frames or 50 frames or whatever you want and then it would give the illusion of a time lapse of the plant growing. So that's what that's useful for. Make sure we're going to render out using our perspective camera. If you're using a different camera, make sure you change it there. And there's our size. Everything's good. Close that out. I'm going to do one final save. And now we're going to do a batch render. So I'm going to go to my animation menu set up to up wrong one, the rendering menu set, go up to the rendering menu, batch render, options box, it's just whatever it is, I haven't never done anything to that, I'm just going to click batch render and close. Alright, it doesn't look like anything's happening, but if you look down here at the bottom of your screen, you'll see results rendering with Maya software. To the far right, if I click this button, it's going to open up the script editor. Down here at the bottom, you'll see rendering with Maya software, at least the bottom of the top section. And in a second, you'll see it start rendering out all our frames. Now, it's going to take a while for mine since I'm doing a 1K image. On the left over here, these numbers it represents the percentage. And you can see where it's going. Here's the file location. And there's the name of the file, tireanimation.2. So it's rendering out frame 2. OK, our rendering is complete. We rendered out all 150 frames. Now we are ready to go into some software to where we can compile those images into a movie. So I'm going to open up Autodesk Combustion, which came with my version of Maya. I'm going to go to File, 
open, go to my desktop, here's our tire tracks project folder and our images folder, they should be inside there. Okay, there's our animation. It only shows one, even though there's 150 images, it only, it only shows one because it realizes that they're all in a sequential order, it's all part of the same thing. So I'm going to select it, click OK. I'm going to select a 2D composite, OK. File, render. Right here it says format, I'm going to choose uh, we can choose anything. I'll choose the uh, QuickTime. If I do window video for Windows, it'll be a better quality, but it will also be um, a bigger file. Um, actually, QuickTime will probably be a, a decent quality too, because we can change the quality on it. I'm going to just click on click on uh, Process, Video Settings. Here we can change the quality, so medium, high, and best. Uh, maybe we'll do high quality. Click OK. Everything else default streaming options, just gonna leave it like it is. Close. It's gonna go on my desktop, which is fine. Let's call this animation tire animation one. Click OK. And now it's we'll start to render it out. We've got a little preview down here so we can see how far along visually the animation is. And then here we've got a uh, status bar that we can kind of see the status of how far it's gone. All right, so it's finishing rendered out now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click close. Let's minimize all this. Here's our animation, our video. It's gonna open this up. Now it's not gonna look really smooth probably in this recording because you're looking at uh, an animation through a recording that I'm doing through Camtasia Studio. But I will attach the the video, this video, to uh, the YouTube channel. That way, you can see a smooth version of the animation. So there we go. That's our animation. It turned out really nice. So hopefully, you can take this knowledge and you can expand upon it and create some really awesome works of art. And if you do, feel free to attach your animations uh, by uh, making it a video. Uh, response and let us see what you did and as always thanks for watching